fighting Mario Staple. He's a decent fighter. Um, he's well rounded. He's got a wealth of experience. Um, he's pretty good on the ground, but he's got a stand up as well. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve for this fight anyway, so I'm really confident. I've trained half of this fight, I've trained with all the lads from Leicester Shoot and Rough House, and I feel prepared. I'd just like to thank all my sponsors that's Renegade, Fightwear, PhD Nutrition, Fighters Only Magazine, Fight Sharp, OnePunchMissing.com, Nisha Graphics, and Pain and Struggle. Hey, this is Mario Stabo from Germany, fighting out of Team Jiu Jitsu Fighter. I will fight uh, Andre Winner tomorrow. I know he's a striker. Um, yeah, my game plan is I don't have a game plan. I uh, just go with the flow. If I if I um, if I can strike him, I strike him. If he starts striking me, I will take him down. I can fight both ways. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a main event of the evening for the FX3 lightweight title of the world. And the first fighter to enter the octagon into the blue corner, let's hear it for Mario Staples. <laughs> Gentlemen, let me introduce these world title fighters properly. The fighter standing to my left in the blue corner. He hails from Germany. He's 31 years old. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 70 kilos exactly. He fights for Team Jiu Jitsu Fighter and has a mixed martial arts record of 22 contests, 13 wins, 9 losses. Let's hear it. For Mario Spider-Man Staples! And his opponent, the fighter standing to my right in the red corner. He hails from Nottingham. He's 26 years old. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 70 kilos exactly. He fights for Team Roughhouse and has a mixed martial arts record of nine contests, eight wins and one loss. He is the FX3 lightweight champion of the world. Let's hear it for Andre, a winner. This world title contest is over three five minute rounds, corners, Clear the cage. Okay, we're here with the main event now of the evening, which is for the FX3 lightweight title, and it's also the deciding belt of the UK Germany se series. Um, FX3 champion Andre Winner wearing the uh, cap camo shorts against Mario Stapel of Germany, a very experienced, well rounded veteran. This should be uh, another intriguing contest. Yeah, Winner coming off a decision win. The last cage warriors enter the rough house. Sort of uh, put an emphatic stamp on on it. His latest performances, uh, some people have said, were a bit lackluster. He didn't show everything. He kind of put that right in his last fight a little bit. He had flying knees, 
vicious strikes, good dirty boxing. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Winner known for his very fast hands. Um, Stapel, good counter-attacking fighter, uh, good on the ground, and very experienced fights in Shuto in Japan, King of the Cage in America. Um, but he's coming off a loss at welterweight against Dwayne Ludwig uh, um, Ring of Fire. Yeah, uh, bang, Ludwig. Knocked him out. Yeah. But, I mean, that was at world away. At lightweight, Stapel is, is a different prospect. He is um, much more suited to lightweight. And it'll be interesting to see how winner breaks him down. I mean, uh, I'd say Stapel is probably the first world-class fighter that um, winner has fought. When yeah. I mean world-class, I mean somebody's really mixed in world circles. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it should be interesting to see what happens. In terms of defending your belt, you know, this is a good test for winner. Yeah. Uh, winner's last four wins have all come by decision. Um, his last three, um, two of them at FX3, I believe, one at Cage Warriors. Sorry, two at Cage Warriors, one at FX3, so... He beat Aidan Marin for the FX3 title last time out. Um, a fairly clear decision. That's right. He's thrown some fast hands so far. You know, these decisions, these decisions, his, lo uh, his last, his one, sorry, he's still not been happy with them. You know? No. He's kind of felt like he's got in there and sort of gone shy. Since he's lost to Greg Lockren uh, earlier yeah. on the year at Cage Warriors, they're, they're clinching at the moment. You'd expect this would be the sort of position that winner would uh, would dominate out. I mean, especially when the likes of Paul Daly, the Cage Rage World Champion, FX3 World Champion, in his corner. Very good Muay Thai fighter. Good, you know, feared stand-up. Yeah. And also knocked out Dwayne Ludwig in his bout at strike yeah. in the USA. That's right. Yeah. This is, something, this is something Andre's been working on in training a lot. These little foot stomps and his controlling and elbows in the clinch. Stopper with two knees, though. Sent him up. When the counters of an uppercut. Yeah, Starple's, uh, Starple, Starple's no mug in the clinch either. Yep. Showing some excellent skills. I think Starple might be cut. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to get that checked. Like, we can't see from here how bad it is, though. Yeah, sh Shame, just as the uh, fight was just about to warm up. Yeah, and you can hear Paul Daly... Just, just to our side, telling uh, Andre Winner no kicks, no kicks. Obviously, wants him to work his hands. In his last fight at Cage Warriors, um, Winner suddenly exploded in the second round, la landing a flying knee, which changed the fight against AJ Wen. Um, That's right. In his last FX3 bout, like we said, against Aidan Marin, he he, he kind of went through the motions, but was but was quite dominant, quite dominant in yeah, the way that he did it. He, he was dominant in in the respect that. You know, he landed shots and didn't really take many back, but he never really looked like he was just going to put the fight to bed. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he's been disappointed with. He's got to get that killer instinct. Right. Other members of the roughhouse gym, Paul Daly, that Dan Hardy. I quit interrupt you to that. It's quite a nasty cut on Starpool. Yeah. When it will look to exploit that. I was about to say, Paul Daly, Dan Hardy, other members of his gym, they, they see blood. Yeah. Uh, and they go after it. They go after yeah. that finish. And Starpool now, sense of urgency. Goes in for the attack, some good shots, dirty boxing. Yeah, Winner can literally see blood now and let's see what he does. But Winner's very difficult to take down, has a very good um, anti-takedown game. Like, like Daly and Hardy, his teammates at the Roughhouse, yeah. and Jim Moorhead as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Roughhouse, one of the leading teams in the country right now, especially at the lighter weights. Well, he's trained a long, uh, a long, long time with Judo Jim Warhead, and obviously he's got some sick takedowns as Warhead. And you know, yeah. you don't train that long with, with Jimmy Wallhead and not learn some takedown defense. Yeah. Oh, good uppercut there for, by Winner. Yeah, Win, Winner's quite happy in this position. He'll stay here, he'll, you know, knock, knock little short blows in, yeah. get the point. It's his world. But just look for those uh, sort of breakaway over-the-top elbows as well when he's in that clinch position. Oh, good right cross there by, by Winner. Very fast, very fluid. Good one too. Yeah, he's got such fast, fast, fast boxing hands. Good head movement. I think um, Marish Stapple might not have expected this kind of fluidity from uh, from winner. Might have underestimated him. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, at, at least his um, his anti takedown game, at, at least. That's right. Good, good takedown attempt by Stoppel, but again snubbed out. Yeah, you saw how uh, 
Andre, Andre Winner just matched, matched uh, Staples' level change. Blocked him, fought in an underhook and just dragged him straight back up. Yep. And here's those elbows we were talking about. You know, just pushing away on Staples' head. And that's when the shots come. Yep. Staples trying to run away, but he's, he, he, he's getting punishment as he does. Winner, deceptively strong at 70 kilos. Oh, and a great way up. Overhand yeah, yeah. elbow, good uppercut, that shook Starple's head. Yeah, and Winner's so nasty body. with his head control and his weight when he presses you against and the and cage. A left elbow, a left uppercut, a, a right, and another right uppercut. And this is what we were talking about with the dirty boxing. Just six skills with the boxing. You know, he'll keep that weight press there, and then all of a sudden he'll break away and he'll throw that uppercut or that, or that elbow over the top. End of round one, Winner's round clearly. Impressive performance so far. Okay, round two about to begin. Referee just giving instructions, telling both men to get back to their corners. And it's title about. Here we go, second of three rounds. Do you think Stumpel has to take this to the floor now and try his chances there? Well, he's tried a couple of times and he's been stuffed, you know. Uh, and then it comes into how can he set up his takedowns better? I think uh, this is the trouble Aidan Marin had as well. And again, another takedown stop by, by winner. That's a hard sprawl there and a cross face. But Starple settles for pulling us off half guard, which uh, I'm not sure is the best idea. No, <laughs> punishing ground and pound here by winner. Starple will try and work his jiu-jitsu game, but it's difficult against the fence, especially when winner's dropping short, stabbing little elbows. Yeah, but it was the only way he could get it there. We saw the takedown. He, he threw a sort of a sloppy kick and, and shot behind yeah. it, but winner was wise to it. It's exactly what um, Adam Aaron did. He tried to take the game down by putting guard against Winner in, in uh, the last FX3. Yeah. But yeah. Th this is uh, an area Starple shouldn't be underrated. Although a good one-two on the floor there by Winner. No, no, we're seeing, we're seeing Starple climb his legs up high, probably trying to lock in a high guardsman, may, maybe isolate an arm for an arm bar. Yeah. But in the position he, he's in, he's only got one way he can go, and that's to lock up Andre Winner's right arm. See, he, he can't spin his hips out the other way. Yeah, and uh, watch out for Starpel uh, with his arm bars. He has um, quite a few victories like that. As they both men back to their feet. Yeah, Winner quite happy to just to back off and let Starpel get back up. Yeah, um, in the bookmakers, a, a narrow favourite uh, winner to, the, to defend his title. Uh, very narrow. Yeah, it's not one I'd, I'd particularly like to put a lot of money on myself. You know, in the MMA game, anything can happen. Indeed, especially That's over the last year. Cut. Yeah, we have seen that the winner is susceptible su to the submission game from the right people. You know, yeah. he, he got choked out of Cage Warriors from a guillotine, standing guillotine. Yeah. Interesting tactic there by Starbolt, striking um, way the outside, trying to loop in and close the distance. But again, winner reverses it. Now yeah. they have some knees while Starbolt's against the cage. Yeah, he looks very composed. Oh, that is a nasty, nasty. stop. Yeah. Ooh. Heard that go through all the cage. But um, Winner looking very composed as Starple tries to push him off. But you see, Starple, he had Winner pushed up against the cage. But Winner decided, yeah, you know what, I don't want to be here. And just spun him around like it was nothing. He really is looking more and more composed. There's that overhand. You hear Paul Daly shout to Winner to go to the body, go to the body. Perhaps see if he throws in a jab, maybe, or a cross to the body. Yeah, and Star Starple left really now to strike from the outside. A brilliant combination but, uh, by Winner, but really didn't get the full impact. That's one thing with... But with uh, a right and an uppercut again. He started to let go of some combinations. Yeah, it's one thing we see with Winner's boxing is he, he's not afraid to throw that uppercut. No. He, you don't see it a lot. Starple now in cut, in sorry, from the right eye as well as the left. Yeah, both eyes open now. Fortunately, it's not bleeding into his eye yet. 
Stop with a, with a cringe flying knee. <laughs> Fortunately for winner, there wasn't a lot on it. It was a bit off balance, I think. The winner's just got such good control with the cage. Mm. You, know, you see, he's got his forehead in, in, Starple's, in Starple's neck, what we call in the pocket. He's got that deep underhook, a little bit of an angle, and he's just using his weight. And uh, We've got a fantastic view here. Ian. Yeah, definitely. And what's more shocking is with, with uh, winners striking, he's only got one TKO victory in eight. Although two, although two victories striking via submission, but... No, it's so oh, hard to believe. Starple tries to pull guard. And I think that's a desperation move now. Winner you know, looking so composed. The winner just beating him now. Two, three, four. And those are some solid shots. That cuts open wide now. I think it's about an inch long above his right eye. Winner taking advice from the corner. Getting slightly tied up, he walks away sensibly. Starple, Starple butt scooting. Butt scooting. Well, the referee might well not allowing it. No, the referee having none of it. And he's calling over the doctors. I think this may be the end. The only thing that's going for Starple now is that it isn't running into his eyes. No. It is a nasty cut, but so far it's not running into his eyes. It's not impeding his vision. You know, experience. we're not we're doctors. And experience as well, he, you know. I wouldn't say that Starple looked particularly hurt or in terrific amounts of danger throughout the contest. No. But... These, these cuts, they have an accumulative effect. Yeah, he's taken some good shots. And he's got the cuts to show for them. Doctor's having a good look. Uh, he's putting Vaseline on it. He's not waved his hands off. He's not waved the fight off yet. Yeah, Cage Medic's very experienced. They know what they're doing. They know what a big fight this is. Yeah, title fight, obviously. It's a good sign for Starpool that they haven't. Yeah, and here we go. He's back in the fight. Starpool looks to his corner. Peter Anger in his corner. Starpool's regular corner man couldn't make it today. And he goes in on the attack again. Yeah, I think he... And a knee to I winner. think he knows the time's short and those cuts can't open up much further. No. But just look at the... <laughs> I was about to say, look at the strength of winner turning him. Starple turned him right back. Starple knows he needs to attack. He's got to go all out. And winner again with a, just a fantastically placed elbow. Yeah, he's ferocious with those elbows over the top. Round two ends. to the temple. Winners round again as he walks back to his corner confidently. And um, it'll be interesting to see if he can finish it in round three. Free speaking to both fighters as round three is about to begin and you get the feeling that Starple is going to have to finish it somehow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's what Peter Anger in his corner has told him. You know, uh, I don't think you can see it any other way than, than two rounds to winner and he needs a finish. Yeah, Starple open mouth there as well. Not a good sign. But on the same token, I don't think I don't think winner's going to be satisfied with beating out another decision. He wants to finish still. Yeah. The crowd getting slightly frustrated, but I can't see why. I mean, it's certainly not a boring fight, very tactical maybe. But you do get the sense that something, something inside winner wants to explode and, and go for the kill in, in, in these fights, but... Yeah, there always seems not to happening. be a little something that, that stops him just going crazy and blitzkrieging people. But he's winning, you know, this will, That's you know, right. three in a row, so... That's right, in none of these fights, it, He's had lately. He's, he's never seemed in any real trouble of being stopped or even or even nearly stopped. You know, he seems quite content to stand and trade with Starple. And this will, you know, if winner can go to distance, it will be an impressive win. Starple went five rounds of Alexander Zidro, the Cage Warriors lightweight champ. That's right. Five infamous rounds. Yeah. Um, and if you look through his record, he's only ever lost. To quality opposition. Yeah, he's only ever lost to the top top guys. Dwayne Ludwig, Thomas Hooter, Sabahino. There will be a real winner, winner hurts Starpool there. Starpool walks away. Make no mistake, at lightweight, this this is a real scalp for anyone. Mario Staple is a big name. At least in Europe. That's winner right. now winner now looking to maybe let go a little bit more of his hands. 
this really announces you, you know, beating Mario Staple really announces you on the European stage at yep. least. Floor Staple. Stop, Staple looking to uh, butt scoot now. Nice butt, butt scoot axe kick to the feet there. Something you don't see in the UK too often. But um, Staple right, was out with some hands. Catches uh, winner with one, two, tries to go for a knee in the midsection. Winner catches him, winner's back against the fence. But again, he looks so strong in this, either in a clinch or an underhook position. Yeah. Deceptively strong. See Starple trying to control a hand there. Perhaps look for the takedown. Winner circles off. But, you know, Starple still looks quite calm. He's not breathing hard. But, you know, when you're a 22 fight veteran, yeah. and you fought, like I said, in Shuto Japan, you don't fight in Shuto Japan if you don't know the basics. That's you right. know. Um, King of the Cage, European Ballet Tudo, the list goes on. He's no noob. Winner again now, to the body. Starple tries to pull guard, flying guard. But now, Starple's got to do something crazy, because he knows he's not winning the stand-up. Yeah. But, you know, winner's not succumbing to it. Winner's not um, allowing himself to be drawn into this quite calmly, sitting there, well, we've just seen dropping elbows. We've seen this in a few of winners' fights. His opponent, frustrated that they can't take him down, has jumped guard into a flying guard, and winners just held him there and hit him in the face. Starple bleeding again from the eye. But winner, calm, methodical. <laughs> I mean, it is the way. I mean, yeah, he's so comfortable in this clinch position. It and it's so hard to take him down for it. I mean, I don't think. I think sometimes Winner doesn't get enough credit for the way he makes fight his fight. His fight. Yeah. He's been in there against some good guys. Yeah, he has stuffed a lot of people's game plans. You know, they they come in. He's got fast, fast hands. Yeah. His ground game. We haven't seen a lot of him off his back, to be honest, because no one's really put him there. Yeah. So and, and and he does seem to have learned from his loss to Greg Lockhart early on in the year at Cage Warriors. Um, you know. He, Here's a different fire. Starple lands a knee, but we're not overly troubled. No, you just get the sense that Starple's throwing this at him, but it, it's not going to finish the fight, and that's what he needs. Uh, St see Starple St hunting low for a takedown. Yeah, I mean, just drags him back up. Credit to Mario Starple. He hasn't stopped trying. No, he's um, he, you know, he's looked to try and get the advantage in all in all ranges, but winner just standing there firm. Nice, nice dirty boxing again. There's those uppercuts and those elbows. Yeah, improved dirty boxing by winner. You think it was the elbows that perhaps caused all these cuts? I would imagine so, I mean. Particularly that one above his left eye, from that right elbow, I think. Indeed. Winner, again, just look at that, suddenly explodes. Yeah, all of a sudden An uppercut there, and the round's over, the fight's over, and um, Andre Winner surely retains his title. Must be. I and gives the UK a 2 1 win over Germany. I can't his, see any other way. Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for these world title fighters. Okay, can we have both fighters to the centre of the page, please? in favour of your winner and still the FX3 lightweight champion of the world Andre the winner well let's have a round of applause for a fantastic competitor let's hear it for the challenger Mario Staples 